What happened that night when you got shot? Is that something you're willing to discuss? Uh, what happened? Do you want to know what happened? I just I come out of the bath and got shot. Not much more to it than that, but... How did you deal with it the week, like the weeks after? Uh, so I got shot. I think I was in hospital for 10 days or something. I come out of hospital. Uh, it's just a bit of a mad time, to be honest. Like, obviously, I'm not going to go too deep into it, but it's a bit of, mad, a, bit of a mad six months go after that, and then uh, things start to calm down a bit. Where about you get shot? In the face. Once? Twice. It took, like, more of a negative path first um, and obviously I was waking up angry, going to bed angry, I was angry all the time. Later on after training and stuff like that, it, it kind of turned that into a positive and gave me more of a drive to do better. Like where am I going to go from here kind of thing. I didn't know what, what I was going to do because um, I, I went through college I, I, I went, I studied and stuff. Um, I come to get a job, coaching and stuff. I couldn't get a job because I had a bit, I had a few little cautions on my record. I couldn't get a job and then from then it's like, what am I gonna do now? So then I took that other path. So for me, it's just like, find something you're good at, find something you can earn something from and just stick to that and work hard. It's, it's more of a time thing. Um, it's more of a time thing and like obviously who you surround yourself with and obviously if, you, if you're if you in the wrong company while you're thinking like them things then bad things can happen and obviously it can go the other way, you can end up in jail, you can end up anywhere, you can end up dead um, but pff, I ended up getting into sport luckily. Here we go, no touch of gloves, straight down for business here, Lerone Murphy. Yeah, it's Lerone Murphy fighting out of Manchester, MMA fighter fighting in the UFC. I blew my knee out at 16 and that's when I stopped doing any sports for a few years. I, I never thought I'd do any kind of sport again because my knee was weak for years and then um, I started MMA and I was always worried about my knee, worried about my knee, but obviously I didn't think I'd get this far, I was just training for fun. Because I didn't know anybody that made it, like from my, from my area, so it's just on TV, so to me it was like, it felt unrealistic and then until I was around like professional people, um, then it's then it become more doable. And if you want to do well, then it's it's all about the circle and the company you keep. Um, you need to you need people that are gonna motivate you. I just started training at first. Yeah, obviously I didn't I didn't want to be a professional. I just started training because I enjoyed watching it. I've been watching it for years. Um, I started training, and then I started liking yeah. it. I had my first amateur fight. I love that. Ended up going to have another amateur fight that was an even better fight, and then I just started thinking, this is what I want to do. Later on, I think I fought for an amateur title after that fight, and then I had one more and turned professional. And I went to America actually, that was like the big, biggest turning point for me. I went to America in 2000. And we were four, four, 15, 2015 and I stayed with um, Dominic Cruz and he, obviously he's a world champion. And then from then it was just like, seeing his lifestyle and then that's just what I wanted to be in it. I was amateur then and I'm doing rounds with Dominic Cruz, even Ross Pearson was there. Um, I'm doing, doing sparring rounds with them and I just, from then I knew it was doable. His um, work rate showed me like the work rate you need to be at the top, um, and I've, I've, I've took that away, away from that trip, and I've, and I've put the work in every day. I just knew where I wanted, to, where I needed to get to. For me, it's just like it's working hard in the areas you need to work at, and working smart as well, um, training smart. People think like just going hard every day, every session, doing 20k runs and all that. This is going to make you a better. It's not going to make you a better fighter. It's all about knowing your body as well, so knowing when to take time off, knowing when to take an easy session, 
um, and obviously having the right coaching people around you that are going to find the holes in your game and work, work the right drills to perfect them. I was in Jamaica, I was in Jamaica with my family, all inclusive, eating heavy, come back massive. I think I must have been about 82 kg when I come back. Uh, and I think I trained, I trained for two days and then I got a, I got a, call, I got a message off my coach on the Tuesday. All it said was, can he fight on this date, which was four weeks from the time. Um, and obviously I thought, it was, I didn't think it was for me at the first and then when he told it was for me, it was just like, phew, like, it was just like a big shock. Now I had no other option, like you just never know in this game, like that. You, might, you might knock that opportunity back and it might never come round. I've seen it happen before, so uh, you have to just take them opportunities, both hands really. I, I only need four weeks to get ready for a fight, really, anyway. Um, I didn't have no injuries at the time. For me, a, f a professional fighter is supposed to stay on it all year round. Anyway. Still want no excuses, I was still fit. I still, I still went the three rounds, like there's no excuses. Never, never excuses. You go to bed thinking about techniques and drills and just stuff like that. It's definitely an obsession. It's definitely an obsession. Even when you like, it's just out and about. You just like thinking, oh, I should be training, or even when you're not doing when you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. You're thinking about fights and stuff like that. It's mad. It's like it is an obsession, definitely. If you're working hard all the time, when the opportunities present themselves, you'd be ready for them. For me, if I when I if, if I stay training consistently, if a good opportunity comes, I'll be ready for that. When you start slacking off and stuff, you start to miss them opportunities um, and that might be your only opportunity to reach your goal. You got called up to the UFC, had your first fight. In the first round, you got dropped within the first minute, yeah. right? That, that, that whole experience was just crazy. I was just, I was just ready to fight. I just knew I was just going there to fight. A lot of people just think, oh, it's my first UFC fight. Just get a fight under your belt and you got your contract and that's it. But I was going there to win. I always go there to win. I'll never just make up the numbers. So when we got in there, um, Obviously, the weigh-ins were first, and all the crowd was like screaming for him. So I just knew, I knew it would be a hostile territory. Like I knew straight away it would be like, when the fight's on, everyone's going to be cheering for him. But I was ready for that. That like give me a different type of fire as well. Do you know what I'm saying? Like as soon as I walked out, I just knew that's it was sick. Just thinking I'm going to knock your guy out now. I was off. I threw. I threw a sloppy low kick. I was off balance, and then he come in with a left hook straight away. Um, I wasn't. I wasn't like rocked, but it just it caught me nice. And when I was on, like, I knew where I was and stuff as soon as I hit the ground, and it's just like defend, get to get back to your feet. I've been dreaming about getting to the UFC for so long, yeah. You get into the UFC, you're in the cage. I'm like taking in the scenery while I'm fighting. Like, I wasn't in the fight, do you get what I'm saying? I'm like looking at the floor, looking at like the, the print around the ring and stuff. So I wasn't in the fight. So when he, if, he threw a few heavy shots towards me and uh, missed, and I was just like, I started like messing about just to get comfortable, yeah? And then when it hit me, that's when it was like, all right, we're in a fight now. I woke up from that. It shouldn't take a big shot like that. That could have been game over. That could have been fight over. It shouldn't take a big shot like that to get him in a fight. But when it's your first UFC fight, sometimes it does take something like that to get you into the fight. Some people don't get into the fight at all because they spend so long getting used to um, the crowd and the surroundings and stuff. I always knew I was going to get there. But when I've been sparring like UFC fighters, I knew I had the ability to get there someday. I just needed, obviously, the right fights, the right path.
At one point, I, it did, it did, I did have a few doubts because I couldn't get the right fights, and then I was, up, I was gonna, I was gonna sign to another promotion, um, and luckily I just, I just waited it out a bit. You just gotta have an end goal in sight at all times, the end goal. So a lot, of, you're gonna have a lot of bad days in this sport, and bad fights are gonna come. Like it's part of the sport, but. As long as you keep that end goal in mind, you've always got something to aim for and a direction to go in. Even, even in that camp, my first UFC camp, I was injured and I was watching um, the tape on the Zabero and I was just like, can I really beat this guy? There's just highlight reels of him knocking this person out, not knocking that person out, and then sometimes you just, you just snap out of it. Obviously, you're always going to have some sort of um, insecurities and wondering if, you, if you're good enough to even do it. But, over time, you're confident. Like it's just part of the part of the fight camp. But on the day, I'm always confident. It's okay to have insecurities. Take every day as it comes. Really, um, don't think too far ahead into the future. And just take take on the challenges as they come. If you want to achieve your goals, you have to you have to step out of your comfort zone um, and challenge yourself. Second fight in, how did you feel going into your second fight? A lot better. Like I, I knew what to expect. Um, I knew the level I was fighting at. Um, so everything was just, everything was better. I had a decent camp. Everything was better. Everything felt good. And I know what level I'm at. Obviously, I knew it was good. I knew it was going to, and I thought it was going to be a tough fight. I knew that, but I've not been beat so. I'm always going to just challenge in it. Like I'm going to always going to see what, what level I'm really at. Like I had my first fight, I didn't win it. I didn't lose it, but I didn't win it. And going into my second fight, if you lose that fight, it's like you've not you've had two fights and you've not won one in the UFC. So for me, I just wanted to get that win under my belt. And like now, there's just there's no stress now. I'm just gonna go in and just do me and ho hopefully perform better. I I want to be a champion. That's my goal. Um, so. I'm going to take every necessary step to get there. And um, if I don't get there, I don't get there, but I'm always going to be trying to get there. Losing, losing is a good thing. Losing, if you win all the time, are you going to get better? That's, I'm, I'm not scared of losing, like I've, I've lost in other situations in it, so, but losing is a good thing at the same time. Big risk equals big reward. Take risks and grow. Nothing phasing me. I've been, I've been through the, the worst of the worst. Nothing phasing me. Like there's nothing anybody can do to me that that can be worse than that. Do you get what I'm saying? So we, we, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. So that's the mindset I have going into fights. Like nothing, nothing can really phase me. Like even if he was to lose, it's it's just a loss. Like what do you get? What I'm saying I'm not scared of anything. Like so, when we get in there, when, when once the fights on, the fights on. Hearing the crowd, looking at looking at all the prints and the stuff, it's like something I've I dreamed of for so long. So when when I got in there, it was just like it was surreal. It's like it felt like I was in in like sort of a movie kind of thing. I play, I play the UFC game actually and obviously I'm champion and, that, and I've designed my character and stuff so that's kind of my, my visualisation that one day I'll get there. The feeling's like, I don't, I don't think that's like the end goal either. I, just, I think that's just part of the journey. Um, you obviously you get to the belt but you've got to defend it. There's a lot of hungry lions after that so It'll be, a, it'll be a mad feeling to lift that belt though, because that, that is the dream. Obviously, talent comes into it, but at the same time, I've, I've been putting in the shifts. Like, I've been training hard, hard, hard. Like, from, from when I started, I've been training near enough every day. No time off. Even when, even when I broke my hand, I was working around it. Um, I've just been putting in extra shifts, so... A lot of them people that I've been doing like 15 years, they're like half-hearted, like on and off, on and off, on and off. I've just been, I've just been at it. Like I've got one goal in mind. So nothing will really take my mind off that or get in the way of that.
be focused on what, what you want from life and just stick to that. Whatever hurdles you come past, just, just stick to that and you'll get there. Like obviously you, you can set goals and not reach them, but that's just like life's never always going to go that just a smooth, but it's important to have goals and work towards them. You might not reach them, but as long as you've got the goals, it's, you're on the right path. Path's never always that smooth and things might happen in your life where you can't, you can no longer p pursue that goal. So you have to be able to divert any, any time. Definitely need hard work to get to the top of this sport because there's so many people doing it. But you do need a bit of luck. You do need a bit of luck, definitely. No matter what comes at you, just keep going, keep going. Like life will knock you down, but always get back up and carry on fighting, always. Pain is temporary. Pain is definitely temporary because I've been through a lot in my life and it's been, it doesn't seem like it's gonna, if it don't seem like it's um, gonna end, but there's always light at the end of the tunnel. I've, got, I've actually got a tiny on the, on the chest there saying um, for every dark night there's a bright day and I always, I always live by that quote. Tough times don't last, really, and you're going to get through it and things are going to be okay in the end. I have come, come across a lot of speed bumps, even getting in the UFC, like my fight wasn't declared on until the day before because of medicals and stuff. And it's just like, it's crazy, like loads of things get thrown at you, but you just got to keep going. Set a target, set, maybe set small targets, not even the end goals, set short time goal, short term goals um, and just try and meet them goals and stick to it and have the discipline. The discipline is the most important. People think you've made it because you get to the UFC, you haven't, you've got, that's when the work starts, you've got the hardest fights of your life. So for me, I've just, I, I'll know, I'll know when I've made it when I'm champion, that's when I've made it. Like, I'm not just doing it for myself, I've got a little boy, I've got a family that, that um, I obviously want to get better in, in a better financial position, so it's not just about me. So for me, I wake up every day with a goal and I'm going to reach that goal.